welcome back to Monday Live on Skype, where right now we, we, we will be discussing the role of censorship in student media. Uh, keep sending us your ideas through the chat room, through Twitter, through Facebook, uh, and we'll try and get through as many questions as we can. Uh, here in the studio, we have Joe Shannon, who is the head of sport for Warwick TV, as well as uh, um, a, some, a sometime DJ on Radio Warwick. <laughs> so, um, um, Joe, uh, to what extent do you think student-generated media can, uh, takes itself seriously, do you think? I think it, well, I, I like to think I take my show seriously um, on Raw 1251 AM. I like to think that when I do become head of sport at Warwick TV that I'll take that seriously as well. Um, I think people do. I think people put a lot of time and effort into their show. I think obviously when you when you're a student media, you, there's going to be a kind of more humorous element to it. But I don't think that necessarily means that you don't take it seriously. I think it's a case of kind of, there's a lot of people at Rule and there's a lot of people at WTV and I'm, there's a lot of people here who want to get into media as a career. And I think that it's a fantastic platform for them to do so, what we offer at the university. You know, they're, they're fantastic. I think they're the best societies at the university by a distance, by a mile. And I think in that sense, yes, people do take it seriously, and rightly so, I think. I don't, you know, it's, there's a sense of fun about it. You know, you're not under pressure, you're not getting paid to do it, unfortunately. <laughs> um, do I deserve a salary? I don't know. Um, no. Uh, but I think, there, I think people do take it seriously, yeah, I do. Uh, but don't you think that um, student-generated media ought to see itself as sort of bound by a duty to act responsibly? Yes, of course, yeah. Like in any, like in any media, absolutely. I think you've got to be careful in terms of how much regulation you put on it though and kind of what you tell people you can and can't do. Um, I think in terms of kind of things like censorship and things like media regulation, the best form of media is a media that's as free as possible and I think as minimal, minimal regulation and minimal censorship is the best way to do that I think. And how would you go about imposing that if it was up to um, you? I don't think they're doing a bad job so far, actually. I think the, the things that they do at Royal 1251 AM, we have our rules on regulations. We have our Ofcom regulations, obviously. We have our own set of rules, which we have to obey. Um, there's a very clear and simple system. You know, if you make mistakes, then you get what's called a strike. You know, three strikes and you're out, of course, and you're not presenting again. Um, on Warwick TV, you know, we're following broadcasting regulations. Um, so I think, that, I think the system that they have there is in place. I just think you need to make sure that you keep it minimal and you keep it as, as deregulated as possible because for me that's the best way that you're going to get a proper media, you know, a free media, a liberated media. And I think with a liberated media there's so many advantages. You know, I think you, you get the ability of people to kind of decide for themselves. You know, the media shouldn't dictate things to you, um, but at the same time it shouldn't be dictated. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's an important balance to be struck there. Sure. Uh, we also have uh, Jordan Bishop, who uh, is uh, a journalist on uh, the Boar newspaper. Uh, Jordan, can you hear us at all? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello, Jordan. Are you there? I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Um, I can hear you, yes. Um, so, Good. do you think, to what extent do you think student media organisations um, should have processes in place to control what students say about each other and about the university, uh, even if it's potentially slanderous? Well, uh, I've honestly got to say that I think the guidelines, the national guidelines that are provided, for instance, by Ofcom for uh, radio, you've got the, um, the PCC for journalism, written journalism, are pretty thorough as they are. They provide a reasonable guideline which broadly speaking should cover issues such as students speaking of each other and speaking of the university. You know, the guidelines are there and they sort they they do their job. And so how difficult is it to avoid media bias in student journalism? And that's a question to you over Skype and to Joe in the studio. How difficult is it to avoid media bias? Yes. Um, well, I think I've, I've often kind of been an advocate, actually, for kind of, um, in, in, a, in a broad sense, potentially introducing certain forms of partial media. You know, I don't think, as I said earlier, I don't think the media should dictate to people, um, you know, what should happen and what shouldn't. Um, you know, I think it's important to remember that, you know, impartial media can have its problems as well. And I think people have got, should have the opportunity to, you know, to make the decisions um, and what the media is saying to them, um, you know, and I don't think it should. I don't think it should it, it completely be impartial in terms of media bias. Um, do I find it hard to, 
you know, to not to not be biased. I mean, I, my my show's a sports show, so of course there's a degree of bias in there. But I think mm. in terms of sports, bias can be you know can be more lighthearted. You know, I'm not going to I'm not going to be building up uh, certain teams more than I do others. Um, I think it depends what sort of what media you're in. If it's more political, and obviously there's there's more there's more of a degree of kind of care that you've got to take in what you say and what you do. I mean, Jordan, to, certainly uh, I've. Uh, read politi- uh, political articles that you've written on uh, the student journals, for example, and on the board. Uh, so, uh, how how do you uh, draw a line explicitly between sort of um, what your stance is personally and what the organisation's stance might be? I think that in my experience of media at Warwick, um, because everyone is a volunteer, there isn't the cohesion. Uh, available to actually introduce what you might call uh, organizational bias. Uh, you know, everyone's got their own views, and in that sense, people will always be biased. Um, but, you know, the Boar, for instance, and Raw don't particularly, I don't think, have a bias in any way as an organization because it simply isn't feasible. If they wanted to have a bias, there isn't the uh, the tools available to actually get that across. I think you just get bias on an individual basis, which might come across through a show or through an article, but that's as far as it goes. And where would you say the responsibility lies for making sure that student outlets don't kind of overstep the mark? Has to ultimately lie, you would hope, with the editorial team uh, or the uh, production managers uh, or your station manager. Um, that's where sort of the buck stops, as it were. Um, you know, that's they're responsible. That's what they're voted to do. That's part of their responsibilities, and that's what they should do. You would hope. I do think, though, I should just add, if I can, I do sure. think there has to be a sense of individual responsibility here. You know, editors, of course, are going to take, and editors and um, station managers, program managers, are going to take the brunt of the responsibility if something goes wrong. But, you know, you've got to have a degree of individuality about this. You know, it cannot be all collective. You know, people, when they when they go on student media, whether it is the radio, the television, or writing the ball, you know, they're saying what they're saying. You know, they, they can't be dictated to by, um, you know, an ed- editorial team. They're, they're giving their own opinion. I think they've got to accept that there's a degree of individual responsibility in, 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 in you know, in doing what they're doing. I don't think it can all be taken back to the editor or the station manager, program manager, whatever. <laughs> but that doesn't. But doesn't that make sort of the op-eds that you might read in the bore, or the ed- the editorial uh, pieces that go in the bore, or something like the student journals? Doesn't that uh, doesn't um, doesn't that sort of render them redundant? In what sense? Well, you know, uh, if if we're going to accept that um, all you know, all personnel are some are in some ways biased, then there's no need for an editorial stance, surely. Well, I think there is because the editorial stance is going to determine, um, you know, it's going to help determine the general conduct of people on the newspaper. You know, you've got to have people in senior positions. You've got to have heads of department who, um, you know, are going to put forward plans for whatever the specific media is. But the conduct of individual people is beyond the control of, 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 the, sub, of, the, of the heads of department. I think to some degree, you know, they can they can they can give them advice. They can give them. Um, briefs perhaps on what to do but when it comes down to it if you're in front of a mic if you're in front of a camera I could say whatever I want here yeah. I'm not necessarily I'm not going to go I'm not going to be ridiculous and I'm saying what I think but you know there has to be a degree of individual responsibility about it you know the, the editor when someone's typing out an article literally that you know cannot be responsible for things that that person says unless of course the editor puts it in his responsibility to proofread every article or, mm. or pre-listen to every show and I think then I think then you're going into the realms of too much regulation and too much censorship. Uh, but uh, Jordan, if something goes wrong, doesn't doesn't this sort of lead to sort of a passing the buck scenario where the editor says it's not my problem? You know, um, the, I'm not the sure how the article is responsible. I'm I'm not sure uh, whether that's the the case entirely. I think Joe is right in that there is an editorial over you know there's an overview. Uh, in terms of editorial stance, but individuals are, um, you know, going to behave as individuals. They're going to do their own thing, and you can't, you can't control that. You cannot uh, always and entirely predict what that will involve. Um, so, I don't think it's necessarily passing the buck. But if someone, as an individual, does something wrong, then they are accountable as an individual. If uh, 
if that's a sort of wider issue that the society has to look at, then it's the editor's response or the station manager's response to look at that. But they can't be held responsible uh, for every single thing that happens uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, that's thanks for coming in. And okay. thank you for Jordan on Skype as well. That's been a really, really good discussion. And we will actually be following up this story next week when we have more information on it. But next, we're going to move on to the national and international news.